Hello everybody, Leafy Concern here. Look at this beautiful image. Welcome to another installment of From My Shelves to Your Ears. There's so much to talk about that I was actually like nervous to even start this video. I had to make a little um, uh, outline just to get myself started here. We'll take it one step at a time. The big, um, the big thing that happened was that I finished just now Room Temperature by Nicholson Baker. I read it in this uh, Grove Press edition that has this nice picture on the cover that has this nice texture to it. I kept on like touching the paper with my finger while I was reading it in like kind of scratching across it with my fingernail. Um, it's like somehow, you know, somehow it's, it's not really like really stylishly designed, but somehow it's just right because it's such a warm book. You can see the level, the degree to which it shines in the light. If I can get the light to, to go on just like that. Yeah, there's some of the candlelight. Um, it's a really nice uh, copy of this book. And it's the second such copy. It's the second copy that I have of this book. I actually have doubles. This was the first one I got. I think I got it from, um, from Powell's in Chicago. And this one has that kind of, this one is a Granta Books uh, uh, one. And it has that more like kind of stiff binding. And it has kind of a cool cover to it. It has maybe a slightly more kind of, um, it, re it reminds me of the uh, vintage cover, which I don't have one of, but it's where like those things are floating in the air. Here you have this bottle floating in the air. And this is a really nice image. It's very like metaphorically accurate, but this is more accurate to how the book kind of feels to read. So like these images are maybe more, this TV I'm not so sure about. Anyway, I'm not here to like, you know, talk so much about just the imagery of the cover. Um, this was the, this was the book I first read um, part of this book in. This is the uh, copy I first read part of this book in and I read to about page 40, I think, because that is where my, uh, my marks end. I, I, I underlined this, I was raised in a petri dish and no little of mud and reeds, uh, and put a star by it, put a star by that, <laughs> which is ap appropriate. And then I, I think I got distracted and then had to put this away. And then years later, you know, a couple of Nicholson Baker phases later, because there was my initial phase and then there was the, um, the house of holes phase that I went in in like, uh, 2019 or so. And then there was the, um, uh, the, the, the substitute and you and I phase of just a little bit ago. And now I'm just like fully reading through Nicholson Baker and allowing myself to really enjoy his books. Um, and uh, I finally read the whole thing here. And uh, whereas this one was published back when the only books that this person had had out were The Mezzanine, You and I, A True Story, and Vox. Did he sign my copy of this? I don't think I got him to sign this one, um, or this one. I don't think I got him to sign either of these when I met him. But this one came out when he had out all the way to, um, books all the way to, um, what am I looking for here? What am I looking for here? All the way to Checkpoint. I'm realizing now that I'm really being uh, very inefficient about filming this video, and there's lots of ums and whatevers. <laughs> I really loved this book. It was warm. Um, it made me cry at the end of, I think, chapter, right here at the end of chapter four, where we get to the subtle gradients of flushes and blue shadows of my own daughter's face. Um, uh, really, this, uh, the nipple on this bottle is a good image because it's uh, the kind of a whole life's worth of details kind of filtering through this one point. You just have to read this book. I mean, if you've ever held your breath, if you've ever eaten peanut butter, if you've ever enjoyed music, if you've ever if you've ever sat in a chair, if you've ever made a mobile, and it's only 116 pages. Part of this book I read on one of the tour legs of a musical tour that's taking up a lot of my time this month. That's keeping me from that's one of my excuses for not making so many videos. <coughs> I also brought along this book, The Centaur, and what am I saying here? Oh yeah. This one um, uh, was great, and this one, I showed it to people, and they were like, wow, 116 pages is the best length for a book. Like, I don't want to read anything over 116 pages. People are craving books like these, great books like these. I'll also say that when we went to, and played uh, at, uh, the, at Sleeping Village in Chicago, um, this, this, was, this book was in the green room, and it was the signed copy of someone named Cole. 
I had picked it up and I, and I saw that it was signed uh, by Nicholson Baker uh, and inscribed to a coal. And so that made me kind of like nervous to touch that book. One thing that room temperature does is it kind of makes you want to write more. I got this campus notebook from that store down on State Street and I got a bigger one um, because the little one took, uh, it w I filled it up too quickly and I thought, oh, this big one will last forever. But the increased space only made me write faster and longer because <laughs> I just need to fill up whatever space is available to me. And nothing will uh, start you in a note-taking frenzy like uh, reading a lot of Nicholson Baker. So one thing I also read was the Fermata. Um, since I last spoke to you, I was reading this kind of around the turn of the year. And this was a fantastic read, and I was finally ready to read it. After having read aloud, cover to cover, whole House of Holes. After having read uh, House of Holes, cover to cover. And after having read uh, Nicholson, ba uh, you and I, cover to cover, out loud. Um, and after having you know read books like this long ago, and after having read much of Substitute out loud, I was finally just like really excited that this book existed. This book seemed like it would be the purest expression of some, you know, part of this kind of time entering, time expanding, you know, Proustian, uh, Proustian enlargement kind of engorgement kind of thing. Um, it, would, it would happen here in the Fermata and gosh, was this a good read. It was a good and greedy read. I really just like tore into this thing. I, I relished it over the course of a couple of weeks. Um, I would, um, dip into it. I can't really remember now, but there was like a more, um, there was a more, uh, respectable book that I was reading, uh, <laughs> and trading off between this and, and that. There was a book I got for Christmas, The Golden Bull, and I would take it out. I was at my family's on, on Christmas vacation, and I would take out this gorgeous book, this gorgeous copy of The Golden Bull, because our mass maker, mass market paperback one is on loan to a friend. And I would uh, hold this and lay on the couch and sort of like think about it. And I would look at the first page and like maybe make a little bit of progress. That was one of the things I did on this uh, winter break. And then what I would do at night is I would read chapters of the Fermata and just absolutely adore them. And I really felt like, I think there's just a, a unique pleasure when the book, it's not that the book is objectively amazing. It's like a subjective thing. You just happen to be the right person to read this book and it happens to hit you um, stronger than it might hit someone else. And to feel like the right person is really the joy of plowing ahead into um, an author's more extreme works such as this. Really, this one feels to me more personal than House of Holes because House of Holes feels like um, uh, more, uh, you know, it's just like a fantasy land, whereas this feels like it's trying to like pry into actual real life. He's trying to attach to real life and um, it feels more revealing and I found this book also very touching in the way that I found room temperature touching. I think these are like, you know, these are really hot to the touch books. Um, uh, you really, you really feel like you're touching the, the heat of off, coming off of someone's, you know, soul. Um, it's really cool um, if you have the stomach for it. And if you enjoyed the mezzanine, for instance, or a box of matches or the anthologist or stuff like that, that might get you primed for something like this. So I really, I, I really enjoyed reading this. Uh, what's next on my little thing? So I've also been reading The Centaur, um, and I'm in the process of reading The Centaur, and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, you know I'm in my updike phase right now. I'm just uh, really loving it. Uh, oh, shucks. That was a real spoiler on that page. Sorry about that. This one really feels like it's got... Um, this is my nice, really well-made um, Random House paperback uniform edition copy of the book. I have Poor House Fair... Uh, assorted prose and couples also in this and now in the beauty of the lilies thanks to uh, finding that at uh, at McKay's see here they all are we got the poor house fair I love that the couples this one's seen seen a little bit of uh you know this one's been dropped or thrown across the room maybe um couples looks nice in that edition and then in the beauty of the lilies got this from McKay's for a buck fifty you can't beat that. This is an absolutely mint copy. And this is a novel I most certainly will be reading. And then this is a sort of prose. This book just makes you sort of like, I just dropped my freaking jaw. Anyway, those all look nice together. And I got the centaur in that, in that edition. I love reading in that edition. Of course, everything is designed immaculately. Like one thing you, you learn about uh, Updike is that a big enticement, like not a, not a minor enticement for him to keep on writing and publishing these books. It's just how like freaking great everyone would look when he was done with it. You know, the design team really uh, didn't sleep on these books. 
I should probably do a more official video when I'm actually like, done with the Centaur. You know, the strains of bringing it on tour kind of uh, dinged it up a little bit. This reed's been in the works for a while, and for a while I had my books, bookmark uh, stuck in this part about the landscape studded with red trees. One thing I like about this book so far is how it alternates between the realistic first person boy talking about uh, the day and the morning, uh, day and night with his uh, father um, chapters, and then it's also got the like fantastical chapters. They're alternated between in a way that feels kind of like modernist and formal, but also feels organic and kind of more instinctual. And I think this mix of like instinctive and, and uh, formally constructed is one of the things that makes the centaur feel so good. It's kind of like at either time you can get, you can, you can enjoy the constructedness of it and the contrivance, or you can enjoy the kind of just like um, autobiographical, um, uh, what's the word, effulgence, um, the uh, kind of, gosh, the, uh, the spirited autobiographical profusion of it. I will be continuing to read this and I'm gonna read this out loud more. And then I think next, um, uh, on future trips, uh, things I might read next, these are two signed books by Nicholson Baker. I remember when I met him, um, I got him to sign my Vox and my Box of Matches. I was thinking that either of these would be a good follow-up to Room Temperature, which was a great follow-up to the Fermata. There's actually only one moment in Room Temperature that really hooks into the Fermata, I think. Uh, you'll, you'll know it when you see it. It's kind of in the maybe the fourth to last chapter around there. Anyway, um, I thought that these might be good um, to go to next because Box of Matches, I was like, this seems like the one that's most it's closest in spirit or closest in um content maybe to room temperature and also since i have been um been uh you know using boxes of matches lately um it's kind of appropriate of someone going to a room going to one spot here it's like a kind of a i think a repeated pilgrimage to a, a spot by the fire here we're just like stuck in one place we don't like go back to it i don't think um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but this would be a good read to follow up room temperature. Maybe it's like a kind of a spiritual sequel. And then Vox is the one that comes next in like chronology published after room temperature. So I thought it might be cool to like try to see with this fresh in my head where the leap to Vox comes. Um, you know, what, what, what about this is room temperature ish. And I think maybe like the stationary quality of a, of a phone call might have something to do with it. The way that this is kind of like a conversation recalls. Uh, a conversation that's take that takes place in a bed when someone's writing and someone else is listening to it. This is kind of like a recalled conversation. Maybe it's like, you know, it, it's very similar. It, it hooks in, of course. And I'm, of course, very primed to read it because I've read the other sex books out loud pretty pretty well, uh, or re read them pretty carefully. Uh, I'm ready for it. Either of these would be great reads. I might just like take care of them both. Vox is a notoriously quick read. Box of Matches, I think, might be even shorter than room temperature if you actually just like take it word for word. Um, because even though this is like 140 pages, I don't think there are as many words per page. Um, another thing I might read is yesterday. I need to freaking read yesterday. Who's read this? Juan MR. This was given to me uh, by a friend and it's gorgeous and it's New Directions, blah, blah, blah. It's like for an IRA head. Um, this I need to read. I mean, the cover is gorgeous. Um, this is going to be another kind of no brainer, I predict, for someone who enjoyed uh, Nicholson Baker and Tabuchi and Aira and all those and like Sheila Hedy, Ticknor and all that kind of crap, all that kind of like close, uh, you know, I, I love, I love, um, you know, like I've been loving the centaur and that's another microscopic kind of book. I love this kind of microscopic close look, squeeze all you can out of a, out of a look at a day. I could be getting it totally wrong about what this is going to be about, but I, I predict that this is going to be a great read if I can step to it. Another thing I might read next is this, uh, uh, the Great American Novel. I cracked this open. I have like a book club edition from like the set from from around 1975 or so, and it looks like it's bound in denim. R interestingly, um, and this is so funny. I'm really I'm really liking how funny this is. I might want to see where this goes. And then since I'll be going back out on the road and reading on the you know in the tour van, this I got on tour when we were in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, and this would be good to talk about. Uh, with the person who went to that store with me, for whom I have made Ashbury selections in the past. And then this is one of the books, one of the first books that person loaned me, and I haven't read it, and, you know, it's been it's been in my possession for a year, and both of these would be really good, maybe, like, good Vox-ish kind of reads, because they're both, you know, dialogues. Um, uh, I could, I, I've been craving more plays, and I think both of these, in their way, would scratch something close to that itch. There's a lot of good dialogue in this, and then this goes without saying. I have a feeling that this would also be a quick read. I feel like if you just took this, this, 
and this in your backpack, this is like, you know, these are just like a few reads you can really kind of tear through, I assume. Maybe I'm being really presumptuous about the no plays. Anyway, train spotting might be one I do next too. And then throughout that time, I'll probably be reading from my newly, com my freshly completed Updike essay collection collection. Not pictured here is Assorted Prose, which I have in that paperback edition you saw earlier. That is a mind blowing book. Um, but um, this has been a big hobby of mine. Uh, I collected all of these before the start of the year and I'll explain why that's significant in a second. But um, I got Picked Up Pieces from 1975, Hugging the Shore, 1983, Odd Jobs, 91, More Matter, 99, Due Consideration, I think like 2007, and then Higher Gossip is this one I'd had for a long time, and gee, look how its covers have warped, you know? <laughs> but it's a great book. I think this one's nicely taken, uh, it's nice to take that one together with um, Assorted Prose and Picked Up Pieces and look at bookends of the essay writing career. And also Higher Gossip, I think, actually contains some pieces that were in picked up pieces and assorted prose that were just revised for use as, I think, like that were just revised here to include more of the speech in the case of the art of humor or the, the humor in fiction and um, uh, to, for, for use as an introduction in the case of the Lusion Defense Review. But one of my hobbies is just t taking one of these off the shelf and then like just reading one of the reviews and then just letting that inspire something, letting that inspire ravenous journaling or the writing of my own fiction or something like that, or the more um, serious consideration of whatever piece of art I'm looking at so that I can think of myself as someone who might be able to review that someday. They're also just gorgeous books, like um, with the top coat, you know, and the, and the cloth. Um, I kind of regret that when Due Considerations came, I got it from like a very, you know, one of those used book second sale kind of things on eBay. When this came, um, it wasn't the hardcover, um, um, scarlet, uh, scarlet cloth, um, edition. And it wasn't also the uniform edition one, which was what, kind of what I wanted. I do like the way these all look in that uniform edition where they're that really flexible paper, but they're still these like big, heavy books. They're just really attractive. Obviously. I mean, we had booked at booktube. We love big books. It's only, it was only a matter of time before someone was like, look, all these big books exist and they're all good to read. And here they are, all, all are lined up. So you have me to thank for that, uh, for that uh, particularly booktubish pleasure. But it's really good that I got those before uh, the start of the new year because I am going on a book freeze. That's right. That means a book acquisition freeze, which means that um, I'm, I'm saying for roughly six months, what I'm going to be doing is just enjoying the crazy quantity of books that's already piled up in my own home and not going out of my way to purchase any others. The only loophole here is if someone really wants to give me a gift, um, people have given me gifts. Um, uh, I'll show you two that came after the start of the new year that um, that are interesting. <clears throat> these uh, these books here, these were both gifts. This was given to me by my girlfriend, and this was given to me by my friend at the magazine uh, and my skateboarding friend. Um, and these are both those New Directions storybook things. There's a Cesar Ira book in this edition that I've always coveted. It's called like The Famous Magician, I think. But I got these ones that I hadn't even like thought of getting, and they're really cool. This one I want to tear through. This one might be a good, um, you know, uh, read uh, to follow up my read of like yesterday or something. I have a feeling that this is going to infect the way. This is going to affect the way I write the novel drafts that I seriously want to get to work on. Um, and then this one has been a really good read aloud, uh, kind of infuriating and also charming. It's like a hundred percent charming and a hundred percent infuriating. And look at that just inscrutable you know, crazy fish cover. Those, uh, those spines really are shiny. If, if you guys have any of these and have been enjoying these, let me know. But these are like the last things that I've gotten, you know, an influx of, and I did not buy these and I plan not to buy anything because I already have so much crap. I mean, just looking at just this one shelf, there's so much here that I could talk to you about. Would you like to hear in depth about my Mark Twain, you know, book? Like if I reread it and like encountered again this first book I got, like what about a crime and punishment reread? What if I finally, you know, uh, like truly engaged with the confessions of Rousseau? Like what if I shared more of these Marianne Moore letters? Blah, blah, blah. There's this new, you know, poem book I got, et cetera, et cetera. Like um, there's so much crap here that I really need to talk to you about and read. I feel absolutely, totally fine doing my temporary book freeze, which be, be, you know, well, I'll let you know it's only temporary. Um, but you know, nobody likes haul videos anyway. They don't really hold up as well. If someone's actually talking to you about a book as in this, 
um, video, I'm talking to you about room temperature, at least you kind of have like a record um, that has some staying power of someone's unique encounter with a book, which has, you know, which has some, has some uh, integrity to it. It's like a kind of essay or a kind of review of the book. Um, it doesn't have the integrity of an actual review. It's more of just kind of like an encounter check mark, but I still think it has somewhat of, of that, uh, you know, some amount of that integrity. I mean, look at these Graham Greene books. I haven't read The Frickin' Power and the Glory. A uh, Girl with Curious Hair. I mean, look at my weird copy, too. I mean, that's worth talking about. You know, there's all kind of stuff here. Um, Within a Budding Road, that needs a reread. Um, Black Lamb and Frickin' Grey Falcon. I could spend the whole uh, six months just reading this thing, et cetera, et cetera. This Charles Ives book, this is, I've long thought that this was going to be the follow-up to my Bill Evans read, my next big uh, music book. Got to get to that. Anyway, so you see how things, um, you know, how things uh, stack up. I do not need to buy anything. I got this Motel Chronicles book a couple of years ago, and this would be a great road read, almost like too good. It's almost like too appropriate. You wouldn't want to like just, uh, yeah, it's a little too stereotypical. Interesting that around the uh, same time, I think my friends are moving and they're trying to get rid of some books. And I almost uh, met them in Chicago and got uh, this R. Crumb book that I laid claim to, but I'm glad that I didn't because the uh, the freeze stays, uh, stays, stays strong. I feel like um, the odds that I will understand any of the Golden Bowl um, in the amount of time that this freeze takes is pretty uh, slim. So last thing I'll say is that I did read some of this aloud, um, and that was good. And that's kind of by way of segue um, to this Emily Dickinson face-to-face -face book um, that I got because it has this forward by Anthony Madrid and also because it's interesting. This I've also been reading aloud, and I just have about like 20 pages left of this. Chalk this up to the, or add, add, add this to the list of things that I feel like I really freaking need to read stat um that might be the next thing to read also really want to read studs lonigan also cleanness i have needed to read cleanness for the longest time i've needed to read cleanness for like five years and i still need to read codex seraphinianus and i still need to enjoy some of the things in this book etc anyway lest this make you think that i'm going crazy and i'm like freaking out i'm not freaking out i'm quietly enjoying nicholson baker um i'm loving it it's making me write. I will be writing and reading, and I hope to uh, share with you more details soon. Everybody, everybody have a good day and happy reading.